Thank you. Thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, so I've got some pretty exciting uh, news to share with you guys. Um, so Mutiny is the unstoppable Bitcoin wallet for everyone. And uh, we're a company now. I'm sure we... I obviously know a lot of you guys in this room. This is just a really exciting opportunity for me to have a conversation that I've had a lot of times with a lot of people, and I'm going to explain what is Mutiny, what, we're, what we've been up to, uh, what is our story, what's our plan, what's our product. But yeah, basically some people gave us some money to turn this little graphic into a real product that will hopefully uh, serve and help people and not just be like a fun technology thing for me, Ben and Tony. But so far it's been a really fun technology thing for me, Ben and Tony. I couldn't, couldn't imagine doing it with any, anybody else. Um, so what is mutiny? Uh, so these are kind of a lot of the high points. There's a lot here. Um, anybody's welcome to ask questions throughout, throughout this whole thing. Um, but basically, we want you to be able to use Bitcoin and Lightning like a, like a Bitcoiner, like a cypherpunk. Uh, use, thing, use this the right way. We have a lot of opinions on what, what the right way is. Uh, but we want to make it a lot easier to do it the right way. Um, so some of the highlights we have, uh, it, it, it's a node that runs in the browser. So zero friction onboarding. You get a link, and now you have a node. You're ready to send and receive a, a Bitcoin. Um, we've done a lot on privacy the, uh, among the three of us, and we think we can encode a lot of that, uh, those privacy best practices just into how the wallet works, and it's not something that you have to think about. Along those lines, uh, coin join into Lightning. So you imagine an on-chain receive in Mutiny could be a, a, a coin join straight into a Lightning channel. So you've got liquidity, um, but you got it the most you know, private way, the be you know, real best practices. Uh, we also have ideas for how we can do a USD peg uh, without a shitcoin using, using DLCs. Um, and I think the world probably needs a, a, stable, <laughs> a stable coin that's not a shitcoin right now. Um, uh, offline Lightning Receive is, is something that we're going to be able to do. And also, we are going to be able to make this usable across multiple devices. So if you think about what you're... What is a wallet right now? You typically associate it with a single device where you are running a, a piece of software. But we think we can and make this portable across devices um, through the power of technology. Uh, but yeah, so like on the graphic on the right, DLCs, coin join, LSP, routing node, these are all services that bubble up into this experience that is Mutiny Wallet. Um, I'm guessing a lot of you guys know us. I'll just give the highlights. Um, uh, Tony worked at Bottle Pay. He's got this famous Lightning Privacy article. If you haven't read it, you should definitely read it. It's sort of the 101 on, on, on privacy in, uh, in Lightning. Um, he currently works with me at uh, Voltage. We, we both are uh, doing research at Voltage. And uh, for one more, <laughs> I've got two more weeks. Tony's got one more week. He's happy to remind me. Um, uh, but yeah, we're going full time mutiny. Um, uh, Paul Miller is, a, I guess, a full stack engineer. I'm a front end guy. I add the drop shadows to things. Um, I, um, uh, me and Sahil have been doing the Austin, and Carr have been doing the Austin Bitcoin Design Club. I would love for you guys to join us there. We're, we're really like um, trying to iterate on Bitcoin from a more product and design a point of view. Um, that's been really fun. Um, I've worked on the, the open source Flutter Mint. Uh, a project that's the first like Fediment wallet as kind of a proof of concept. I used to be, I don't know if people know this about me, I used to be a uh, technology journalist and then I learned, I learned to code and I'm really glad I did. Uh, ben, uh, just ask Ben about DLCs. That's his favorite question. Um, ben is an ama uh, just an amazing developer um, and obviously a host of the Austin uh, uh, bit devs. Um, but a lot of uh, DLC and coin join experience, which is which is huge for us, and he's been working on this Lightning Vortex project, which I'll I'll touch on a little bit. So, how did this happen? How did this become a company? So, I wanted to give just a little bit of our story. If uh, uh, that graphic on the left there is a screenshot uh, from my Figma for 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 PLN, uh, but basically before that, uh, Ben. Uh, Tony and I were working at Plub Lab together back when it was at a Capital Factory. 
Um, and during, we sat down. I think we, we booked it with each other, but we sat down for a lunch together and talked about what would we want in a Lightning Wallet. Like what, the, 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 there's various ways where we're dissatisfied or we think there's missed opportunities or there's new technology or new privacy techniques on, on the horizon or that we just know already. How would we do it if we built a, a Lightning Wallet? Um, uh, Tony and I did this PLN project and that's the, the, the screenshot on the left, um, the private Lightning Network wallet. Uh, where we started doing this, where we were encoding privacy best practices. Hence, no receive, only send. If, you, if you're not aware, you know, lightning uh, receives are famously you know, fraught. That's not, it's not a great uh, privacy. So we were like, okay, well, let's just be real assholes about it and only do the private thing. Um, that project uh, eventually turned into mutiny, um, and, uh, a, but a very different mutiny. Uh, this was a... Uh, it was a Flutter app? Was it a React Native? I can't even remember how we built it. I think it was a, a Flutter app um, with like a, a you know a node running in, in on a server somewhere. Um, and, but we we had this at Bitblock Boom when we're walking around buying things with it. I've got like some Zimbabwe money that I bought at Bitblock Boom uh, using using Mutiny back then. Uh, ben this whole time has has been working on uh, Lightning Vortex, which is a is a coin join implementation. Like I said, you can coin join into a Lightning channel, um, and I I can't speak to all the benefits of it, but it, it really feels like the kind of the next gen of of coin join. And um, all of us, um, and and including some other people, uh, worked on this Lightning Privacy Research pro Project. So if you go to lightningprivacy.com, you can see some of our thoughts. And a lot of that's kind of forward-looking. There's a lot of technology that is on the horizon that kind of needs some protocol adoption. Uh, but things like you know blinded paths, uh, PTLCs will be huge, uh, trampoline. There's a lot of technology that once it's ready will improve privacy in Lightning. So we're we're excited about that, and that was a fun project. Um, and then uh, if Voltage uh, started supporting me and Tony to work on Mutiny half time. Uh, so we were doing another half in, in, in Voltage research, but we got to, to really you know, start working on Mutiny, and that's when we did the, the Bolt.Fun hackathon. So that was a six-week hackathon. Ben joined us, and we built the node in the browser, which is like the kind of the big weird thing that Mutiny is doing right now. Um, so yeah, so anyways, pleb lab to hackathons to money is basically my, my narrative. Um, so there was some really good conversation earlier about, you know, you want to be solving a problem. So like, what problem are we solving? And so the obvious first one is we're scratching our own, own itch. This is a problem that we perceive of we wish Lightning Waltz were like this or did this, we're capable of, of X, Y, and Z. And we think we're the best people that can deliver that, so why don't we build it? Uh, one of the, the I, I went back th through my notes from that lunch meeting. One of the lines we came up with then was like the cold card of Lightning Wall. It's not that it's a hardware product, but that, that kind of ethos of they're going to do what they think is the right thing to do, and they're going to give it to you, and they'll make it as easy as you, to use as they can, but they're not, they're not going to gloss over the details. Um, and there's also kind of this, uh, I actually got this from Parker Lewis, that the Bitcoin are best practices are best practices. And I think we see this maybe not as much in the UX world, but we see this in the world world where Bitcoiners are on to something. They know uh, there's a better way to do things. And we're, we're not just sitting around and waiting for it to happen, but in some sense, the world is shifting in our direction. So we're not necessarily chasing the trends of how everybody else thinks things should be. Um, and so I think there is an aspect, uh, uh, there's an opportunity to, while we want to make Mutiny as easy to use as possible, um, encoding Bitcoin best practices and, and chasing Bitcoin best practices as the way to build our wallet, I think is, is, is a really op a big opportunity. And then the other people I think this is for is the friends of these Bitcoiners. And these are, these are my two <laughs> initial pillars. Uh, you want a, a wallet that's easy to onboard people to. And I think this link thing is going to be huge for that. We also have this idea where you could send someone a link and uh, preload it with Bitcoin. So they click a link, and when that page loads, they have a fully functioning Lightning wallet that is a full node, or not a full node, it's a, a, it's a full Lightning node. And um, 
they're ready to send like right away. So like the, the, the easiest possible onboarding. But also w when you think about like onboarding friends to, to Bitcoin, you know, do you, do you tell them to use Wallet of Satoshi and do you, do you put a friend into a, like a custodial relationship? You were just explaining about how Bitcoin can't be stopped. You were trying to orange pill them. Um, so, you know, but you also don't want to send them down a path of something that's going to be too complex. Um, so yeah, you want low rug, rug ability, and I, but I think this can be a real focus for our UX going forward. Once we nail the Bitcoin or use case, make sure that handoff is really nice. Um, I have a personal fear that we could become a, a technology in search of a problem company because we're three engineers and we love technology. Um, we've already packed a lot of it in it. Uh, these are... This is just a small sampling of the buzzwords that we can throw around. Uh, Rust, LDK, BDK, PWA, WASM, JIT liquidity, LSP, CoinJoin, DLC, Synthetic Dollar, WebSocket Proxy, Rapid Gossip Sync. Like how many people have like uh, five or more of these buzzwords? All right, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. I think I saw four or five hands. Um, so anyways, I, I don't, think we're just technology in search of a problem, but I want to keep this in mind to make sure that I keep on refocusing and that we keep on refocusing on the problem and who we're trying to serve, how we're trying to make uh, something better in the world, something that people actually need and want. Um, and we think a lot of this technology enables the, the, the solution. Um, and I think a big one uh, that I, I think about a lot is how big of a deal LDK is. Um, if you're not familiar, LDK is a, 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 a development kit for, it's like a tool kit for building a, a lightning uh, wallet or, or node. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a rock solid foundation. It's built in Rust, built on top of the Rust Bitcoin primitives. And one of the things I think of this, this really resonates with me as a Bitcoiner as very a low time preference. This is something that's being built for the very, very long term. It's not a quick win. It's been a long time coming. Uh, this project has been in the works for a long time, uh, but it's really matured at a great time for us to take advantage of it. Um, it also gives us this awesome flexibility because it's a toolkit, it's not prescriptive. And so we can take the parts that we like, um, we can adapt them to exactly how we want to use them. Um, and also uh, because they aren't building the whole thing, they're just building the toolkit, um, the LDK, LDK team has been very focused on uh, new protocol things. That, like I said, the, all these exciting privacy techniques that are incoming to the protocol, I believe a lot of them are going to land in LDK first. Um, and LDK already has um, some, it, some, you know, async payments are in the pipeline. So that's a big thing with mobile. You know, if you're the person you're trying to send to is offline and their node runs on their phone, you know, how are they supposed to receive? So async payments can be solved for that. Um, they're working on uh, Bolt 12 right now. So I'm really excited to be building on LDK. And I think it's going to give us capabilities uh, that aren't really uh, possible with a, a lot of other wallets. So why are we building for the web? Um, because uh, we're technology in search of a problem. No. So the, so the first, uh, first reason is because Tony got banned from the App Store. So it's really Tony's fault. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but that, that really kind of really resonated with me. Uh, we, were, you know, we were trying to, to, to get an app, Apple App Store account, and we just couldn't for whatever reason. And that's not how it works on the web, you know? On the web, I make a thing, and I put it up there. And I didn't have to ask for anybody's permission first. And I think, again, that's really on the Bitcoin ethos. Um, and I think that is a great place to have as our home base for what this app is. Uh, we do have ideas of, of making mo mobile apps, and it's, it's not clear to me exactly when that can happen. Um, hopefully soon, because I do enjoy personally using mobile apps, but I like the idea that uh, uh, can't be stopped. Uh, and, and, and especially with you know, more interesting products that we want to bring on, like CoinJoin, DLCs, you know. I don't want to be asking Apple's permission or scared of, you know, like, oh, what if we get rejected and then we have to change, you know. Oh, we're just going to build stuff, and it's going to be really good. Um, so, like I said before, it's really easy onboarding. Also, like if you think of like, uh, there's a lot of apps like this, like Slack, Figma, Discord, Reddit. 
that they have a perfectly competent web experience. Uh, a lot of people use that the first time they use that product. And if they really like it, then they move to, to the native version. So I think that's another reason. Also, from a technical perspective, this is the hardest thing to do, was getting a node in the browser. And so as, as technology people, we were excited about that challenge and like, hey, if we can overcome this hurdle, like, I think we're going to be on a pretty good track. Uh, but I will say it's really scary to be managing people's funds and, 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 and working with private keys in the web browser. So part of why I think it's going to take just a little bit, we're not ready to ship something right this second. Um, well, I'm really grateful that we've got funding pre, pre-product. Um, uh, you know, we have a lot of proof of concepts, but I don't have something that I'm comfortable somebody, you know, holding their money on yet because we want to really get this right and not compromise user funds. And it's a little harder to do that in the web, but I think we, we've got some good, good approaches there. So why privacy? Um, maybe this is really obvious to a lot of Bitcoiners, but it's actually a really interesting thing when we were thinking about this as a product. You know, we like talking about privacy. It's hard to tell if it's even a good thing to lead with when selling to users. Um, and are you doing people a disservice by not telling people about privacy? Or sometimes it sounds like some, some privacy advocates feel like you're doing them a disservice by telling everybody the product they like is private. <laughs> They're like, you know, I want to hide in a crowd of a normie product. I don't want to be some isolated private uh, weirdo. So the way I've been kind of thinking about this is that like, there's something about privacy that it, um, it, it, it's a simpler head, headspace. So th there is the very naive version of, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't care, uh, and no thought about privacy. But as soon as you start thinking about privacy, you start to become kind of paranoid. You just assume anything you do digitally is seen by everybody at the NSA. And uh, it's, a, it's a little, it's, it's oppressive, and, and, and it's limiting, and, and it's scary, and it, it's not how I want to live my life. So you start to adopt privacy best practices. You read blog posts on how to be, you read Tony's lightning privacy uh, uh, post. And you start trying to adopt some of these techniques and some of them are harder than others. And you do the best you can, but you start to fear that you're not doing enough. You're, so you, now you're doing all this work, but you still kind of feel like you're at the number two spot. You still kind of assume that you're probably not doing enough. Um, so where I hope Mutiny fits in is in this kind of list of tools. Um, oh, I forgot a slash there, but yeah, like Signal, Matrix, Proton Mail, Mulvat, things that are well known as privacy tools, um, as tools that provide you some level of, of industry best practices for privacy. And so you're not you're no you're going to know you're not perfectly private, but that you have advanced the state of your privacy significantly without really sacrificing your, your, uh, your daily life too much usability-wise. That's my hope. So why is this a business, though? Uh, how do we make money? So uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, but we, we have a few different ways we're approaching this. I think coin join is a, a, a coin, coin join coordination is already a really well proven business model in in the Bitcoin world. Um, Samurai and Wasabi, for instance. Uh, so I, it's it's highly possible that that will be our, our primary revenue. Uh, we also, you know, for the stable sat stuff and for other DLC stuff, we can serve as an oracle and charge fees for that. There are the standard LSP service fees like. Um, for enlightening, like nobody seems to be making a ton of money doing this, but we also still don't quite know what the Lightning Network fully mature looks like. So maybe there is a pretty big business there. But the one I'm really interested in is this charging $5 a month for a Mutiny Plus product. And we put some features behind this premium feature gate. And I, I th it's, kind of, it's kind of, I've started to think of it as a feature. It's a way, uh, it's important with a wallet, you want that wallet to be there for a long time. You want to know that it's gonna continue to exist, that it's gonna continue to improve, um, especially if you know, there's new advanced features you can't get anywhere else. 
unless you're paying for this monthly fee, I think there's a, uh, 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 you can build a confidence that I would really want a user to have that I want to have with whatever wallet I use. So I'm really hoping this works. No idea. Uh, but it would be really cool. And we can just take the money right out of your wallet. So uh, it's no problem. <laughs> 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 That's a, yeah um, the yeah no, low ruggability um, but we're still really open source and we love open source we're building on a tub, ton of open source and pretty much everything we've done so far has been open source. Um, for instance, the node manager, that's kind of the core logic that LDK and BDK, all that stuff gets wrapped into this nice little JavaScript package. The I is a front end dev, just import into a regular React app, and I build the front end of the wallet on top of that. And you could build your own wallet on top of Mutiny Core. In fact, I would love that. And I think there could be an interesting, um, if we're building something that's really good and really useful, interesting network effect of other people building wallets on this and contributing to what Mutiny Core is, is capable of. Um, the, uh, the LSP stuff, uh, CoinJoin, uh, uh, we're gonna make a routing node implementation from the, very, you know, the same code that can run in a browser, can run on a mobile phone, can run on a server. Um, that's kind of the, the, the cool thing with Rust. Um, and so those should be open source as well. And, and uh, you know, the, the, obviously the web browser can't do everything. So for instance, you know, we don't run a full Bitcoin node in the browser. We talk to an API for, for block data. Um, uh, a browser can't uh, uh, connect directly to peers on the Lightning Network uh, for the most part. So we proxy those connections over, over WebSockets. Um, and then also the LSP services, we, we hope to have kind of a, 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 a community of, of LSPs where people are even running their own LSP um, or an Uncle Jim LSP or it's just a business venture for them. And so we want to have multiple backends. We're going to launch initially with a Voltage as, as an LSP for us, but we hope to eventually have our own and, and have others that can serve this wall. So the, the sort of thing where you get that easy onboarding is very much powered by LSPs. And so these services will be pluggable and self-hostable. And, and so that improves both the, the self-sovereignty, the unstoppability, uh, but also the privacy of, of the wallet. So here is our, our roadmap uh, right now. This is all pretty rough. Uh, but basically, we're going to work on getting something that we feel comfortable having a couple hundred bucks on and walking around with and spending and then start giving that to our friends. Um, then we're hoping for an open beta in July. There's a Lightning Summit at uh, Bitcoin Park. So that'll be, that'll be uh, an exciting launch. I hope we hit that. Some point, a 1.0, uh, which just means we're going to be less scared of you losing your money. Um, and then, yeah, it gets fuzzier from here. Um, I, like I said, it would be fun to do the native mobile apps, and I think there's a way to do this. Most of our logic is in the Rust, so it's... A lot of it's just you know, wiring it up to, to a front end and making the front end pretty. I'm pretty good at the making the front end pretty part. Uh, so if we figure out how to wire it up, I think we can do some no native mobile apps. Um, and then down the road, coin join, our routing node implementation, uh, our LSP implementation, DLC stuff. Um, and so yeah, we'll just, we'll just see how, how quickly we can get this stuff out there. But uh, yeah, our, our big milestone that we're really, really hoping for is that open beta in July. Um, and we have a pretty cool wait list actually. If you go to mutinywallet.com, you can put in your, you can sign up with email like a boring normie wait list, but you can also use your InPub. And it, 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 it was fun, it was fun to have this idea just it was because from the premise of privacy, like we're start the very first thing we do as a private lightning wallet is that we say we want your email address. <laughs> like that's, but here you just give us an impub. Just just create a new impub. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Just give us your impub, and we'll DM you when you're when you're in. Um, but yeah, mutinywallet.com, and that's it. So yeah, I guess uh, well, no any, nobody interrupted me with questions, but um, anybody have any questions now? What? There was a whole slide about that, Vivian. <laughs> Where is it? 
Wait. Look at that. How do we make money? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, will it be just as you, like the usability style of of Wallet of Satoshi with whatever privacy gains? Yeah, basically. So that 1.0, like 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 I, you saw down the road, is some more features. That 1.0 is you should be able to send and receive just as easily, if not more easily. Uh, but probably just just as easily as like a moon or a phoenix or a breeze or or even something custodial like Wall of Satoshi. You should have a very similar user experience. Um, that you know the hard thing versus a custodial is like those offline receives. But we'll see where LDK is at that point. Um, but yeah, it should be really easy to use. Uh, we for the hackathon we built something that's kind of like a node manager where you would manage your peers and channels and do all those lightning things. But I don't think that's very scalable. And I think through the, through the power of LSPs, uh, we can get this usability to, to where we need it to be. Yeah. Uh, mm. So the question is, is privacy and, and uh, user experience are usually kind of opposite, yeah, incompatible, fighting, at odds. I think, I think the way, you know, and like I said, you know, Tony and I did this PLN project, and that really sacrificed usability. You couldn't receive. <laughs> that really sacrificed usability for the ultimate and privacy. And also, like, you're going to have to run your own node. Like, the, there was going to be a lot of work on the user's part, and, and that's just not going to hit a very broad audience. So I think kind of the rubric we're going with right now is what things, what are what are the easy wins with privacy? What are things that we can do, pri add privacy, without sacrificing the user experience at all? And so there will definitely, I'm sure there will come a point, like for instance, like the coin join into Lightning. So you want to receive on chain, you've got some funds in Coinbase, send to your wallet, we can make that a coin join right then, but that costs a little bit more to do a coin join. Also, it's a little interactive, so you might need to have your, your device open. You know, so that's a, maybe a slight hit to the usability. So I think that should probably be the default, kind of coming from the ethos of you know, how, how do Bitcoiners use their Bitcoin. Uh, but there also might be an option to turn that off. So I think that's kind of where that tension's going to hit. But I think there's other things where we can add uh, u privacy um, without sacrificing usability at all. So like one of the things that Tony recommends in his Lightning Privacy article is that you should spin up a different node for each channel. So you don't have multiple channels. You're at edge node. You're not trying to route, right? You're, 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 you're just trying to send and receive from the edge of the network. So you don't need to be a routing node. So, so you want to have these separate nodes for, for, for the reasons of privacy, but that's like really hard to do if in a typical scenario of how you typically set up a node. For us, it's kind of just like a you just click a button. Like you could just click a button, make new node, new node, new node. It's just like a pub key basically for us. Um, so that's something that we can we can ultimately have this wallet use different nodes per channel, also using multiple LSPs. You know, which is a privacy thing instead of having a, a one to one relationship with our wallet and our LSP, we want our users to have multiple LSPs, but that shouldn't sacrifice the, the privacy, or sorry, that shouldn't sacrifice the usability, might even improve the usability, um, but it, it will protect the privacy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's basically any privacy best practice that we could write with code and just do it, then we'll just do it. If there's something that they have to have loaded into their brain of how am I, how do I, how do I use this privately, then we've kind of failed a little bit. That's the kind of the goal is to automate whatever we can. 
And we, we even have this, you know, that's pretty small here. Uh, oh, you can zoom in. Uh, I don't know if this will end up being exactly like this, but even this idea of kind of like a health and letting people know, um, because I, I think that's one of the really hard things with privacy is having the confidence. You do a lot of work to be private, but there's all these famous cases of like somebody did this and this and this, and they coin joined, and then they did one wrong thing, and they blew away all that privacy that they worked so hard for. So trying to find ways to give someone an assurance that, hey, you took funds, you, 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 when you received, you coin joined those into a lightning channel, you're good. You've did enough, you passed the bar, and so you don't have to stress about this anymore. Now, you send another on-chain in, and you choose not to coin join at that point. We might mark that and like let you know, like here's, you know, this is, um, uh, this is toxic in some way, or this decreased your privacy health, something like that. Um, that's kind of the, that's kind of our mindset for that. But it's it's going to be like an ongoing tension for forever. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been, I'd love to hear what, what, what Ben and Tony think about this. The way I kind of think about it is, it's like they were thinking of me. They weren't thinking of this, uh, like this uh quasi this consumer they weren't thinking of a consumer who bought it at a store and need, doesn't know what bitcoin is they they were thinking of like paul miller is a nerd and he's going to sit down and he's going to figure this out it is it's kind of an intimidating product and, and i don't aspire to be that intimidating but i do inspire to be uh in some sense like kind of no nonsense straightforward honest um, I think one of the earlier panels, uh, Keon was talking about that honesty. I want to have like that honesty with the user, like, hey, I mean, even, the, you know, the, it's translucent plastic. <laughs> it t it, sh it tells you where to shoot it to, to, to disable it. Um, that that kind of ethos really resonates with me. As a Bitcoin, I feel personally targeted by, by that, the way they built that. <laughs> yeah, just for the recording, Ben said that cold cards are the creme de la creme of of a of a hardware wallet, and so we want to be the creme de la creme of Lightning wallets. And there's no obvious one right now. Right now, we plan on not. So basically, uh, we're going to do just-in-time liquidity, very similar to like a Phoenix or a Breeze. So you create an invoice on your device. Um, oh, the question was, uh, how do you plan on exposing the user to channels? Um, you create an invoice on your device. You hand that to the LSP service. And when that invoice is paid uh, through that LSP, uh, a ch if you don't have any inbound liquidity right now, the channel is opened to your node right then, and the funds are pushed through that. And so that means not only do you have unlimited inbound liquidity, because you can always get a new channel from an LSP, but also you have all that outbound, because it's all, you already have funds pushed on. So now you just don't have to think about channels. And that's, you know, it's worked pretty well with, with Phoenix and Breeze. Um, I do think there's a question of, I, I have a concept I really like to think about with Bitcoin products that I, I call uh, progressive enhancement. 
where you start out at a certain knowledge level and there's, you can really only handle a certain amount of complexity. As you gain in knowledge in Bitcoin, you typically kind of hop from product to product. Like, ah, oh, I was fine with this custodial thing now, but I realized that's not good. I got my funds off of Coinbase and now I custody. You know, and so we move. And so I, I would hope that, that Mutiny in the long run could have some sort of progressive enhancement to some ad, more advanced user who, if they want to do something with their channel specifically, that we can expose that complexity to them when they're ready for it. But I think out of the gate, we don't have to show it at all. How do we handle hyper Bitcoinization where there's not enough room for everybody to have all these channel opens all the time? For, for one, we're definitely not solving that right now. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the potential ways is something like Fediment, um, and that's a, a, a way to get a lot of, we can potentially integrate with Fediment. I think that'd be really cool and really complimentary to what we're doing. But also I do think there's going to be innovations in the lightning stack and protocol for how to do like batch channel opens that will roll up a bunch of different channel opens all into one on-chain transaction. So there's been a lot of research and thought that's gone into that um, and nothing's ready right now. Uh, but that is also a potential way to scale this model of having lots of channel openings happening on-chain. Leave the hooks in? Uh, no, I, I really don't. I, I actually disagree that I don't think as Bitcoiners we should prematurely optimize. And I, you know, I see this all the time. This, this always happens when I'm coding where I think like, oh, I, I see what's happening right here. I'm about to use, make something that I'm going to use all across my program. So I'm going to create an abstraction right now. I'm going to get ahead of the curve and make my abstraction right now. And I never end up using that abstraction. What happens, it, where, where it actually works, is I, I make a kludgy fix for now. I copy and paste my code to a bunch of different places. And then when I see the pattern emerging, that's when I create an an abstraction. So that's really how I think as a developer to avoid premature abstraction. I think also as Bitcoiners, we should avoid trying to solve 100-year problems or even 10-year problems um, because I think when we see how we engage with the problem when it starts to arise will actually inform us a lot more on what the proper solution for it is. Yeah. Um, not exactly, um, because we're not a browser extension. So we don't, like, if you are on another website and an invoice pops up, we're not necessarily there to solve that. But I would like to figure out how we could be there to solve that. So I'm sure there are some ways, maybe add a browser extension to what we're doing. Um, there might be other things of just, like, Maybe some people just add a mutiny link. You know, you could pop, you could click a mutiny link with the invoice, and if you have a mutiny wallet, you know, you'll be ready to pay that. That seems unlikely as a, and maybe there's a, you know, more general protocol for that. Maybe WebLN is the protocol for that. But I would like to, I would like to scroll down to a purchasing page and be able to click something that takes me right to my wallet uh, to pay. That would be nice. But I don't know exactly how we do that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, perhaps. Yeah, the the uh, like I said with the uh, I don't know where that my LDK slide is. Um, the 
I really like the low tide preference of building in Rust generally. And so our goal basically is to get as much logic as we could possibly have in Rust. And then, not that what I do doesn't matter, but in the front end, it's much more disposable. You know, like the, the fa- you know, front end frameworks go in and out of fashion, you know, every couple of weeks. Um, it, that whole space is moving really fast. There's actually some really interesting stuff happening in Rust for making web front ends, so that might be really nice. Um, ultimately, I, I have a dream of, um, of making the, the whole core of the Rust, uh, the whole core of the application in Rust, and literally only the UI part is in whatever native platform. So Re- Re- React right now kind of feels like the native language for making interactive websites, uh, just because it's so popular. It was just kind of a safe pick, in a, a stack of a lot of risky technology. Um, and so I want to do the same on mobile, of using Kotlin on Android, using Swift on, on iOS. But hopefully, the amount of logic that's in Rust driving the UI is, is of, of the vast majority. Yeah, so ideally, you need to be able to do server-side. Server-side. Well, it's not server-side. It, 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 that Rust code gets bundled into Wasm and gets shipped to the browser. Um, and that Rust code can also be compiled and run and run natively. So it's not really server side, but it is Rust side. <laughs> I want to write logic, especially logic about Bitcoin in Rust. <laughs> the app store that downloads to your browser. We'll work on that. Any other questions? Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pleb Lab.